Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Shelley. Uh, thank you for everyone who has been to uh, today's workshop, Engage with Asian. And for those who are not available to attend this workshop, here is a recap. And I hope you will, uh, you know, have the insights from this and have, you know, some practice. Um, from um, applying those skills. So firstly, I would like to say um, thank you for those people who have done the um, pre-workshop survey. If you, have, if you haven't done that, let's see, um, you can see the survey link. I still appreciate if you could do that because those insights are reflected in our workshop. So most people find it very useful. Um, we value your insights. We want to develop the program based on most current challenges. So much appreciate your uh, participation. Uh, what we talk about a little bit our, about ourselves. So I founded the Transformational Journeys last year. Our vision is to connect individuals and cultures to empower our future. So three services we provided. We provide you uh, culture insights. We help you to interview your customers to get a focus group and then so you can get the most updated um, intelligence about your target market. And secondly, we are your capability catalyst because we believe everyone has their own capability, you know, in inside themselves to come when it's come to engaging with Asia is not uh, it shouldn't be that hard even you are not speaking the language um, so you there are some common skills so we just need to catalyze in that um, you know from your capability and we understand sometimes people might need help you know just to uh, you know hand by hand step by step step so we are also sometimes play a consultant role to help you build a roadmap a little bit about myself. So I consider myself have success in both areas. One is business growth. The other one is organizational development. So the first one is numbers game. In the last uh, um, 16 years, the campaigns I have done all actually generated a double digit growth. And it's also that experience kind of make me realize how important people are, the talent are. So that's why I moved my focus to people strategy. I want to unleash people's potential, no matter you are mainstream or you are ethnic diverse talent. So everyone has their own potential. So and then no success wouldn't be uh, become a reality if you know I didn't unleash my potential that's why I want to now help people to unleash their potential that's why I did some like a cultural intelligence seminar uh, in IAG which is the largest uh, insurance company in Australasia and also doubled the um, number of ethnic graduates in IAG so not many people has done that in the market in the organizational uh, development space so if you are interested um, you know in doing so so I'm Quite happy to help you and also I spend quite a lot on myself um, both on personal development and professional development so it's about five to ten K a year because I know you don't want to learn from someone who does not constantly improve themselves and that's what I do there are some testimonials on my website uh, transformational journeys dot me slash founders that um, testimonial so you can check it out so that's why uh, some of the project I did and also my own story was featured uh, across a number of international medias, including New Zealand, Singapore and China and some industry um, magazines and newsletters. And also I personally worked for TVNZ, Mari TV, uh, WTV in New Zealand and the Singapore uh, National Television Media Corp and also Jiangsu Broadcast Corporation in China. I've done a lot of things right. I probably speak very fast and I also done a lot of things wrong. So that's why today I can share with you the four strategies to reach double digit growth in the Asian market. First, I would like to share, um, you know, use a case study to share those um, four strategies. Three plus two love road to ride campaign uh, is the campaign I created when I was the uh, business development manager um, for destination road to uh, for the Asian area. And uh, uh, what we did is uh, we had, uh, I created a three year Asian strategy um, and it went through chamber of debates, you know, a lot of, you know, convincing. So the key component of that strategy is we prioritize um, Asian, domestic Asian, you know, for our three years strategy 
back in 2011, at that time, not many people in the tourism industry actually believe the buying power from the um, domestic Asians. But I firmly believe there are also cases to prove that they are, they, their green power, their uh, buying power are increasing. Uh, just like a lot of the Asians living in Australia and living in Canada, uh, their buying power actually are bigger than the local domestic New Zealanders or Australians or Canadians. So, and then I noticed that, and also there's another factor is those people are great ambassadors for their families and friends back in Southeast Asia, back in China, back in, you know, um, Taiwan or Hong Kong. So we, at the same time, we develop a market, we also develop a link, a bridge, to the remote Asia. So that's, uh, that's the strategy we are uh, using uh, back in 2011 for Rotura District Council and a destination Rotura as well. And then the campaign idea is to design and uh, to invite all our target market, uh, which are domestic Asian in New Zealand, to design their own three days and two nights uh, itinerary in Rotura. And then during that campaign, we secured a major sponsor, China Southern Airlines, which is the fourth largest airline in the world. And we also, because Rotura um, doesn't have a lot of budget uh, when it's come to campaigning, so that's why we also uh, uh, encouraged our stakeholders to be part of it. So we actually sold this idea to 12 stakeholders who can financially support us. Okay, strategy number one, emotional drives. So during this campaign, um, in, even we invite people, you know, um, our target market to design their own itinerary, but we put them into four categories. Because in those four categories we identified, we believe it can emotionally connect with our um, target market. First one is the luxury. A lot of middle class living here, they are very hard working. They forgot to even look after themselves. So we actually have a message, treat yourself. So that actually reson can resonate with their inner needs quite strongly. So that's the first um, category. The second category is family. Family members, a lot of the children living here with their parents, so their parents can look after their children. So three generations under one roof, a lot of guilt um, feelings are playing around because, you know, sometimes uh, people feel, uh, you know, the, uh, the parents uh, feel like, oh, I have my parents looking up after my children and, then you know, they are busy with cooking for us, feel really guilty and then I probably should treat them with something and then just uh, to, you know, it's kind of doing something for the guilt and then we actually provide them a chance, you know, come to Rotorua and connect with your loved ones. It's a chance for all the three generations, um, you know, having a holiday together and they connect with each other. And so it's quite, you know, strongly and uh, emotionally kind of uh, resonated with them. And third one, romance. You know, we have a lot of uh, Chinese couples here, Asian couples here. So we ask, uh, you know, you design and some surprise for your loved ones. And, you know, we have a, a lot of romantic spots you can do it. And we actually showed them how to do it. So they are quite happy about that. And the fourth one, back in 2011, Auckland has a lot of um, international students, probably more than right now. And um, they are here to study, but they are also here to explore the world. And then that's why we want uh, the message to get crossed, feel the excitement, not just a study, but feel the excitement, design your own itinerary. So what we did is through those category and in the submission of the itinerary, we create an emotional connection. Therefore, we create a trust. You can't sell anything, you know, if you don't have the trust with your target market. So I think we think that the very crucial step is to use that campaign to create a trust. I also ask this question in the survey before you come to the workshop. If the trust between you and your target market was created, what does it look like? And here is your answer. It might be hard to see. That's why I picked the top three ones. So you think if this is created and you would understand each other better and you would value the difference across cultures and you also can design the core offering by inviting um, Asian customers inputs. So it's more kind of, you know, you kind of feel like understand and then value it and then finally you can actually doing this, this you know, together with your uh, audience inputs. That's great. That's what we actually have achieved in 3 plus 2 Love Rotorara campaign. 
Strategy number two, customer empowerment and insights. You might heard we uh, talk about, you know, this is a campaign to invite um, our audience uh, to design their own campaign. So we give the power back to our target market. It doesn't mean we don't have professionals uh, design um, uh, our um, products. It just because um, if we're gonna do the product development anyway, why not use this process as a marketing uh, campaign as well to engage with our audience? So as a result, we actually have had a quite precise insights for our product development. So among all the submissions about our itinerary, 27% are actually the biggest pie is the family category. So let actually give us the indication we need to put a lot of focus on the family um, um, travel marketing. And then the second category is romance. So you see, we although we list those four tech categories, we didn't know the priority in the minds of our target market, but this campaign actually told us what is the insights. So that's number two. So number three strategy is KOLs, stands for Key Opinion Leaders. Among all those uh, family, adventure, luxury, romance category, we invited different uh, key opinion leaders um, in the community to come and do a free um, three days and two nights item, you know, the experience in Rotorua. So, and they in exchange, they agreed to uh, write something on the newspaper. So we actually paid for that. And then they also agreed to um, talk at, on the radio and also share it, you know, on the video so we can broadcast this through local um, Asian TV stations. So at that time, our media spending is 40% on social media, 30% on print, and 30% on radio and TV. So this is back in 2011. If I'm going to do a campaign right now, the ratio is going to be different, probably more heavy on social media. Strategy number four, reward and culture recognition. So. Um, many of you might think, you know, uh, to conclude this campaign, to announce the winner, we could just hire a hotel room uh, or a conference room to have this done. But what I did is, I think this is a great opportunity for all the stakeholders to learn something from this campaign as well. So I did a, a kind of a get agreement from um, um, the people who are in charge, uh, the largest Buddhist temple in Auckland. And then we want to make it, uh, it a more kind of cultural practice. So, and then they agreed to rent their uh, meditation room out for us. So as you can see, I did my presentation to share the result and our sponsor actually giving prize to the winner. And then uh, our counselor and our sponsor actually together to actually showing like this is the Chinese culture, this is the Maori culture, and here they are meeting together. So it's kind of quite a culture ceremony here as well. And then all this um, stakeholders coming from, they are driving from uh, Rotorua to Auckland, they also had some kind of cultural learnings uh, inside the temple. We have volunteers in the temple who share uh, the Asian culture with them. As a result, Economically, we achieved a 20 to 50 percent sales increase for the Chinese New Zealand market. When and later on, we also uh, because the trust has been built between um, uh, our organization Rotorua and our market, and also our partner like uh, China Southern Airlines. So later on, we signed a memorandum of understanding with China Southern Airlines, which is worth a, one, a million investment into. Um, Rotorua's tourism. Reputationally, we actually get six times uh, awareness increase when compared to the same time last year. And we also successfully repositioned re Rotorua in the minds of our target market. And educationally, we helped the destination to design the, uh, um, our target market preferred products, as you uh, already heard. And we also increased the overall culture intelligence level inside the Rotorua Council. So we actually achieved a lot of pur uh, purpose, uh, a lot of goals, not just economically. So that's why I'm showing you, if you actually achieve, um, you know, have applied in those strategies successfully, you can actually uh, tick a lot of box and then probably not just economically, because this is all gonna be beneficial for your company. You might ask, if this is was so successful, why uh, there are no other organizations, uh, especially in the tourism industry, you know, creating more campaigns like that? 
Great question. We had this discussion in our workshop, and many people have, you know, also uh, expressed uh, their different view. So, in my experience, as I talked to, um, because I was invited to, you know, tours in New Zealand and Wellington and Dunedin to share my experience, and I think what is missing, first one, is a certainty about target market and product niche, because. Uh, um, Every uh, tourism product is different. Rotora has an uh, advantage because uh, we are only two and a half hours um, from um, Auckland. So we can market that to say a weekend trip, right? But other uh, organizations, other destinations, they may not have that advantage. So they may need to play different uh, role, different niche, and then probably uh, they have a different target market. They may not target those four categories and they may need to choose or create even another category uh, for their target market. So this all needs a commitment and investment into it. Secondly, clarity. Because this is not a campaign done by Shelly, myself. It's a, a done by a team. So we need um, a talent, we need partners, we need service providers, we even need um, to know how to use those commu communication channels. So those, if you don't have those clarity uh, yourself, it is very hard for you to find a right talent or even to brief your uh, service provider. So that's actually that's why I said we need to catalyze every individual's capability here. Second, uh, thirdly, roadmap. I give the roadmap to a lot of uh, you know organizations, and, then, and now I think the reason they couldn't copy it or they couldn't make another campaign like this is because they haven't tailored uh, the roadmap for their own, own organizations because. Everyone's culture is different. Every organization is different. So we need to, um, you know, everyone, when they got a roadmap from other people, we always need to alter it. And ask in, your, in the survey, so what is your goal from those lessons you have learned? So the top two one is uh, increasing business growth and audience attractions in the Asian market. And second is build a competitive edge in the market. Thank you very much for watching this. And then if you want to know more about me and my business, please visit www.shellyhuang.co.nz. And you can also like our Facebook, which is transformational.journeys.me. Okay, thank you very much. I really look forward to seeing you in the five days challenge and then hear from you about any feedback you have. You have a good day.